Hey guys, Brian from Brian Bow is here. Do you have bugs in your snake room? Well, most of us do have bugs in our snake rooms, even if we don't want to admit it. Today I'm going to talk about the different types of bugs that you may encounter in your snake room and what to do about them. I'm going to talk about the ones that you should try to eradicate at all costs, the ones that are merely an annoyance, and the ones that may actually be beneficial. So be sure to stay tuned. The type of bug I'm not talking about are the invited guests, things like tarantulas and centipedes and other invertebrates that we choose to have in our reptile rooms. I'm talking about the uninvited guests that show up and aren't always welcome. And so the average American home, interesting statistic, has somewhere between two and three dozen different types of invertebrates living in it at any given time. So there's a pretty good chance you have bugs in your house and some of them are making it to your snake room. And so today I'm gonna to talk about the worst starting at the beginning. So the ones that you definitely wanna get rid of as soon as possible because they might be doing harm to your reptiles and or yourself. And then I'm gonna talk about the ones that aren't quite as annoying up to the ones that could be beneficial. I'm gonna talk about different treatments you can try and what I've used in the past and what's worked for me, what hasn't worked. So everything about bugs here as far as things that could affect your reptiles. And it's probably no surprise to you that I'm gonna start with the single worst type of bug or invertebrate that you can find in your snake room, and that is the reptile mite. And I've done a lot of, uh, or several videos in the past on reptile mites and how you should deal with them. So check those out for an in-depth discussion. But um, if you're new to reptiles, you haven't heard of reptile mites, you may have noticed that your snake is soaking in its water dish and you don't know what's going on and then you look in the water dish you see these little tiny black flecks you know a few millimeters wide this is uniform little black flecks that look like kind of like poppy seeds from a bagel those are reptile mites and they are getting worse and worse they're just, just something that can be a nightmare to deal with if you go to any reptile show there's a pretty good chance that a lot of the reptiles there have these little mites um, when people sell reptiles after they've only had them for a few weeks and they buy and sell and trade almost like baseball cards it's spreading the mites all over the place so that's the problem these mites once they're in your collection they're very difficult to get rid of all it takes is a single mite to uh, continue the infestation because they um, can reproduce um, by parthenogenesis and they're just totally a nightmare um, I had uh, some incidents about 10 years ago where I went to a reptile show and, you know, got a snake, brought him home. I put him in quarantine for about a month and a half, thought I was fine. Unfortunately, there were little mites that were present that I didn't see. They got into my main collection and it took months to get rid of this infestation. It was just an absolute nightmare. So you want to make sure whatever you do, you don't get this infestation. First of all, you wanna quarantine all new reptiles for at least three months. You wanna keep it in a separate room from your main collection. You wanna isolate everything in that room. Don't bring anything back and forth. I know, make sure you um, wash yourself and you know even change your clothes before going into the main reptile room. The mites are just uh, a nightmare to deal with. A lot of people just assume that any new reptile is potentially infected with mites and they might treat it proactively as well as doing the quarantine. So that's something you can consider as well. Uh, but there are several different products that you can use to get rid of reptile mites. Oh, incidentally, I forgot to mention, they're little tiny bugs that suck the blood of your snake. Each little one probably doesn't do that much damage, but they can get to such huge numbers that they will literally suck a snake dry. Okay, they're just, um, uh, you know, really bad. They can hide, they're really, really tiny. They can hide in little cracks, um, almost impossible to see. And what I would recommend is that when you try to treat your mites, you wanna hit them hard from the beginning. Okay, a lot of people, maybe they treat with a spray and they'll try treating once and you know a few weeks go by, things look like everything's back to normal. But then a couple months go by and the mites are back. So now they're treating again and they might try a different product. You know, maybe they'll try two treatments now and it looks like it worked but then a few months go by and they come back. You really have to hit them hard from the beginning. You probably also want to potentially do several different types of treatments. Um, you have to break the life cycle because if you don't break the life cycle, they can lay eggs and the eggs can hatch 
you know, weeks or months later, and it just, you know, creates an absolute nightmare. And it gets to the point where it's a psychological torture because you don't know if they're there or if you've dealt with them. And it can drive you insane. It's almost like people that have bed bugs. Okay, the bed bugs are very difficult to get rid of. They're very hard to detect in many cases. And they can go for years, in some cases, you know, over a year, um, where you don't have them and they can suddenly reappear. So that's the same thing with the mites. So there's several different types of treatments. One of the most common types of treatments is a spray called Proventamite. Uh, it's a, actually a permethrin spray, and it's fairly effective, but you have to use it um, several times. So I would say you have to treat all of the enclosures with the Preventamite spray. Um, wait a few weeks, treat it again. You know, wait a couple weeks, treat it again at least three times, if not four or even five times. This spray is not for the reptiles. It's only for the enclosure, so you should remove the reptiles, obviously, because it can kill them too. And, you know, put them in. Usually what I would do back when I had this issue, I would soak the snakes. Soaking can be effective at getting rid of the mites that are on the snake, but it's not really going to kill them all, of course. So you have to do the, um, the soaking while the uh, enclosure is being treated with the preventamite spray. Once it, it dries out, it's um, safe for the reptiles, but you don't ever want to spray your reptile directly or put it in there when the fumes haven't dried yet. So incidentally, any treatment that I'm going to talk about in this video, please read the instructions carefully, okay? I'm not saying this is how you should use it. I'm not trying to um, endorse these products. I'm just saying this is what I've used in the past. They are dangerous. Anything you use to try to kill an insect or, you know, invertebrate can also be toxic to humans, reptiles, and other pets. So please be careful. Please read the instructions um, and, you know, follow the instructions. The Proventamite spray has to be ordered from a specialty reptile store, but you can also get something called bedding spray, louse bedding spray. They have it at like Walmart and different drug stores. And the active ingredient is the same thing. And I, there's been a lot of debates on, about this online, but trust me, this stuff works exactly the same as Proventamite. It is permethrin as well. It will kill the mites the same way that Proventamite will. It costs quite a bit less, probably about a third the price, and it's available um, probably locally to you just at your Walmart or drugstore. So I would recommend getting this stuff if uh, you have the mite outbreak because you want to treat as soon as possible to try to get rid of these mites. Okay, and again, you want to spray only the enclosures. You don't want to spray the reptile itself because this stuff is toxic to reptiles as well. And incidentally, any of the treatments that you use for mites, unfortunately, can be toxic to reptiles. So you have to be really careful. Fortunately, the mites in other invertebrates are a lot more sensitive to the effects than, than reptiles or humans. But they, these products can harm reptiles. There's a lot of reports of reptiles being harmed if the products are not used uh, as directed. So please, please, please read the labels. Don't use these things uh, as not directed. So the last time I had a mite outbreak, I was using the Preventamite or actually the bedding spray, Permethrin, and it seemed to be having an effect, but the mites, they just kept coming back and it was driving me insane. It was just an absolute nightmare. And I tried, I started using multiple treatments as well. Uh, something called a hot shot, no pass strip. And this is a very controversial product. It's actually banned in a lot of countries. Uh, I think it's banned in several different states too. Uh, it contains, I believe an organophosphate pesticide. Um, you know, similar to something like DDT, which is also banned. So this is strong stuff, okay? And the way this thing works is a little strip that's, um, it's a kind of like a rubber strip that's impregnated with the pesticide inside of a little plastic cage inside of this uh, foil pouch. And you take it out, and as soon as you remove it from the pouch, it starts to emit a, a vapor of uh, very dilute of the pesticide, which I think is dichlorvos is what it's called. But it's really, really toxic, and um, you want to exercise caution with this stuff because it will kill reptiles. It can cause harm to humans. Okay, I think on the label it says that you can't use it in a uh, room where humans occupy more than four hours a day. 
Um, you know, so you're not going to drop dead if you open it. You're not going to, you know, go into convulsions or anything like that. But this stuff, you really have to, you know, be careful with this stuff. Um, what I found that was effective is I would use the uh, permethrin spray and I also used the strip and I just hung it in my snake room and I would hang it for like a, a couple days at a time and then I would take it down and I put it back in the pouch where it's no longer emitting the vapors and um, you know I, I did that for a couple months um, basically the hot the no pest strip was hung for a few days a week and you know that seemed to be finally effective you know I also at the same time I use like uh, diatomaceous earth on the floor and so the mites couldn't spread and I put down double-sided tape I went kind of full at it uh, to get rid of these mites and luckily it finally worked but you can use this stuff but just be very careful I do not recommend you having this up all the time I've seen some reptile keepers they just keep it hanging in the reptile room all the time you know because they don't want to deal with any mites and they're constantly bringing stuff in and out but i do not recommend that this stuff can be harmful i also do not recommend that you put this inside of the cage with the reptile you know some of the older reptile books say that you can take the strip out cut and cut it into little pieces and put a little piece in each cage i've seen some horrifying youtube videos where people will put the entire strip inside of the cage with the snake and there's not really good ventilation so you don't want to do that but you can hang it in your reptile room as long as you use it as directed so i'll just leave it at that and there's quite a few other types of treatments out there for mites anything from iromectin to predatory mites which are these carnivorous mites that will eat uh, smaller mites um, so you can try different things, but as I mentioned, you want to hit the infestation hard and you potentially want to use several different treatments at once. If you have any other experiences or other uh, anecdotes to relate about mites, I would appreciate you, it, you writing it in the comments below. So mites, the worst type of bug you can find in your reptile room. The second type of bug I'm going to mention, just uh, for the sake of, of um, complete, uh, being complete here, are ticks okay and i've never had any ticks on my snakes but i just bring it up because a lot of wild caught snakes come in and they have ticks attached to them of course these are just little blood sucking parasites arachnids that suck the blood and um with any captive red snake it's highly highly unlikely you're going to see ticks there's also a very small chance if you have a dog or cat that a tick could come off of your furry pet and uh, parasitize one of your snakes i've never seen anything like this happen but it, it is possible but if you do have a tick basically you just have to pull it off with tweezers and you should be good to go okay so the first two parasites are or first two types of bugs the third type of bug is also has some negative effects and that's ants and ants can get in your house there's lots of different types of ants here in california we have these little tiny little ants they look rather innocuous they don't really bite or sting as bad as like a fire ant but they are present in huge huge numbers and there's just like trillions and trillions of them out there uh, apparently there's like a massive massive colony that spans like most of california they get into people's houses a lot and um, they're attracted to different foods and different smells what i've noticed in my snake room they don't they're not attracted to the snakes but i've had incidents where they've been attracted to my rodents and i have a few tubs of mice that breed and when mice breed sometimes they have uh, babies that don't make it or there's you know a residue from the the birth and uh, the ants can be attracted to this and a few times they've gotten in and they've gone from just one or two ants to like thousands of ants like within a few hours i mean it's crazy how these things just show up uh, so if you do have this happen what i would recommend you want to obviously clean your mouse enclosures very clean you know get rid of all the ants um, the ants you know they can actually attack rodents or potentially reptiles as well when there's been a lot of them i've been cleaning them up i haven't had any of this happen in the last few years but uh a few years ago i did have one incident where it happened the little things will actually bite you and it's not that much of a painful sting but when you have lots of them and they're all on you it's it can get uh, a little annoying to say the least but you just want to keep your rodents clean you shouldn't have any issues with ants 
Um, we've had them in other parts of our house. You know, we've tried different ant products, different gels, and um, you know, so they usually work somewhat. You can get these also these uh, like these stakes that you put around your house. We've tried those as well. Um, I haven't had any ant issues in the last few years though, so hopefully the little suckers are gone for good. Thought I'd grab another snake. This is a Tarhi Maraboa, a young adult female. Incidentally, the one that I had in the last few scenes was a uh, holdback Suriname red tail, born in 2020. This animal was born in 2018. Actually, I have her sister from the same litter, is actually breeding now. I just paired them up last week. Uh, this one is going to wait till next year, uh, but uh, she's probably ready now. Just I didn't have enough males to go around. You know, wish I had saved, I held back more males as well. So anyway, back to our countdown of bugs in the reptile room. The next group of animals that might, you might have in your reptile room as well as the rest of your house are flies. And there are lots of different types of flies. I'm no expert in them. I've seen several different species that have uh, showed up in my house as well as my reptile room. And like the ants, they're really more attracted to the rodents. And um, they, they look for, you know, dead rotting carcasses to lay eggs. Uh, you know, which develop into maggots, and that's how they reproduce. And if you have a rodent that dies in one of your um, breeding tubs, or you have the baby rodents that die, or even just the smell of the afterbirth, that can attract the flies. And of course, you want to keep your rodents clean. You have to clean them. You know, I've, I have to change mine every other day. Um, but you might have to clean them more or less often, depending on how many you have in each tub. But that should take care of it, you know, that uh, you break the cycle if you clean on a regular basis. Sometimes I've had experiences where I fed snakes and I didn't notice that they hadn't eaten the rodent. They grabbed it and maybe constricted it, but then they end up not eating it. And it just sits there for a few days and the flies come and lay the eggs. And, um, you know, if you're away from the snake room for a few days, maybe you have to go out, out of town for a while. You come back, you have this horrendous sight of a rotting uh, rodent carcass full of maggots. And I've had, I've seen this before, so uh, not a pretty sight that you wanna see. So again, you wanna make sure that you clean the cages and clean your rodent tubs on a regular basis. The flies themselves aren't really that harmful. They're just more annoying than anything. And um, the, the flies seem to get in upstairs and then sometimes I'm filming my videos and uh, you know a fly will get in and they're kind of buzzing around and it's really distracting and sometimes I have to refilm sections and sometimes you know I used to get even flustered with these stupid flies and spoiling the video some of them got into the videos um, I haven't had as many issues with flies in the last few years though um, not quite sure why maybe I think they maybe just haven't been as bad the last few years because of the weather but who knows Anyway, flies are not that damaging. They're just more annoying. You can also get these fly tape strips that you hang from the ceiling and the flies will stick to it and you can get rid of them that way. Um, I wouldn't recommend spraying for them. You can get spray, it's toxic, you spray and it kills them. But of course, it's gonna be toxic to your reptiles as well. And because the flies are not that dangerous, I would say just to try to remove them physically by with those uh, fly tape strips or even a fly swatter you can use. So related to flies are gnats and gnats are these little tiny flying insects and uh, I bring these up because people who use coco core substrate sometimes will have outbreaks of these gnats and I think they're called fungus gnats I don't really know that much about them I've just seen other people's YouTube videos where they complain that these things come out of nowhere and they just proliferate and there's thousands and thousands of them in a very short period of time. Um, I've used coco core quite a bit the last few years. I've only seen a few outbreaks of gnats and they've been limited to one of my tubs. So what happens is if the coco core becomes overly moist or if it becomes uh, contaminated with um, you know snake poop, sometimes they can bring in the gnats and the gnats apparently are eating the snake poop or you know somehow living off that and what's weird is they just come out of nowhere like it looks fine one day and then you open the tub the next day and there's like thousands of gnats um, 
So what I would say if you have this happen, you want to clean your tub, put in fresh substrate, either Coco Core or another substrate, and usually it doesn't happen again, at least in my experience. But some people have gotten, uh, they've stopped using the Coco Core because of these gnats. I don't think the gnats have any negative effects other than they're annoying. Um, so they're not going to harm your snake, but they are annoying to deal with. So probably want to try to get rid of them. So a few scenes ago, I talked about the no pest strip, and I just wanted to come back to that subject because these things will kill any invertebrate, okay? They're not selective. They kill anything that's um, invited or uninvited in your, in your um, reptile room. So if you have a pet tarantula, you definitely don't want to hang one of these, okay? They will kill everything. So if you, you know, are in a situation, you want to just wipe out any invertebrate living in a room, this is a good solution, okay? But again, they do pose potential harm to your reptiles as well as humans, so you wanna exercise caution when using them. And you know, some people think that this is like the most evil thing ever, and it's like an, you know, an atomic bomb or something. Other people hang them all over the place and they have no concern at all. So I would say it, it's very effective at killing invertebrates, but it's not selective. And it's, it's kind of like a sledgehammer, so just use these things with caution, okay? If you have any experiences on these no pest strips, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Next type of bug, I've seen a few times, and I think they're attracted actually to my rodent food, and that is roaches. And so I wouldn't say I had an outbreak. I saw, you know, a couple roaches scurrying here or there, uh, you know, and, um, it didn't seem like that big of a deal to I me. Mean, my wife saw them and kind of freaked out. So she got these little roach trap thingies. You know, there's some kind of bait in there and you put it down and they go in there and it took care of them because uh, since we started using those, we haven't seen roaches or I haven't seen any roaches. Um, and again, when I did have the roaches come, it was just a few of them. I'm pretty sure they were attracted to this bag of rodent chow that I have. Um, I've not, I didn't see any in my snake cages, but you know, it's possible you might see a roach or two. You know, they're not that dangerous. They don't really do all that much. I mean, they're, I know they can spread some diseases, but uh, you know, the number that you're likely to see, at least in my experience, is not that great. So you probably want to take care of them, but it's, you know, not that big of a deal really compared to some other types of infestations. So the next type of bug, um, is something I didn't even know really what it was at first. And I had, when I started using the cocoa core substrate a few years ago, I noticed there were like these little tiny things moving around in there. You know, first I thought it was just my eyes were playing tricks on me. You know, I got my glasses since, you know, my vision, my close up vision has been going downhill since I'm being getting old. And I noticed there were these little tiny bugs. And, you know, they're, they're not mites. They look different from mites, obviously. They're not, they weren't um, on the snake or, you know, touching the snake or biting the snake, anything like that. But I, you know, I did some research and I'm pretty sure they're springtails. And people will actually use springtails in bioactive vivaria because they can clean up the, the waste products of reptiles. And um, apparently they're just ubiquitous either in cocoa core substrate or in the environment itself because I know people will actually get cultures of them for their bioactive vivaria but these things just showed up and I don't know if there were eggs in the cocoa core substrate or if they came in from the outside but whenever I use cocoa core substrate um, I will often see these little tiny springtails moving around and it seems like that they are eating the poop of the snake. Um, and there's more of them if your substrate is kind of more moist, you know, to maintain humidity. I don't think they do anything harmful. They're just kind of there. So at first it kind of freaked me out, but I don't really, when I see it now, I, it just doesn't faze me because it doesn't appear to have any effect on the snakes. I mean, it's possible they're eating the snake poop. I wouldn't recommend you using that as a method to clean your enclosure because they're never going to be able to eat it all and it's just going to build up. So obviously you don't want to rely just on that. But if you do see these little springtail thingies, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I'd be curious, any of you guys that have used Coco Core, have you seen these things? And do you have any more information on what they are 
or where they're coming from because it's crazy they just show up almost out of nowhere um, there was a theory called spontaneous generation that life could just arise from uh, inanimate objects which is looks like it's happening there but I would assume that the eggs are coming in with the cocoa substrate or they're just ubiquitous in my local environment one more boa to look at for today's video this is a hog island boa born here in 2019 and this one possibly will be ready next breeding season when she's about five years old actually paired up some slightly older holdbacks uh, for their first breeding season a, a few days ago so hopefully we'll have some baby hog islands in the summer of 2024 but uh, real nice animal nice light colors lots of speckling you know just what i like in a hog island boa and so now we've gotten to the last type of bug that you're likely to see in your reptile room and this is the only one that i would say might have beneficial effects and that of course is the spider and there are lots of spiders where I live. I don't know if maybe Northern California is like a hot spot for spider, spider biodiversity, but they're everywhere. Um, you know, my house has spiders hanging out in the corners pretty much all over the place. Um, you know, even if we move them outside, they seem to come back. You know, if we do hang, if we, um, when I used the hot, no pest strip, of course, that took care of them, but, I don't mind the spiders and you know the spiders will catch flies and they'll eat other insects so I don't mind having them in my reptile room um, people will often um, focus on deadly spiders and you know the two most famous venomous spiders in the US of course are the black widow and the brown recluse although causes of human fatality by either are extremely rare and brown recluse spiders don't even live in the California. I mean, you know, people all the time will say, oh, I saw a brown recluse. They don't live in California. They live like in the central part of the U.S., the central south to the Midwest, but not in the East Coast or in California. Black widows, on the other hand, are native to California. And I've had several black widows in my reptile room. And honestly, I thought it was kind of cool, you know, because... You know, we've all seen the pictures of the black widow spider with the red hourglass on its abdomen. You know, beautiful looking animal. People will, you know, keep these as pets who keep invertebrates. But I just had the black widow just show up. Um, so I was actually feeding her in the web. You know, if I saw a fly, I'd throw it in there. I didn't get too close, of course. I'm not an idiot. But uh, I kept my distance. But I thought it was cool that, you know, I had this black widow living there. And so she lived there for a few months and then it seemed like she wasn't getting enough food because there weren't really any flies left since i haven't had any flies uh, lately so i actually moved her outside carefully and let her go in the bushes just so hopefully she would be okay and so i don't advocate moving any venomous animal like this like a venomous snake or or, or spider um if you do, just be very careful. I kind of used um, some plastic deli containers to kind of trap her uh, with gloves on, of course, and then moved her outside. And I actually got curious about uh, human fatalities from black widow bites. And what I found is that human fatalities are extremely rare and possibly not even uh, possibly non-existent. So any of the supposed fatalities that have happened from black widow bites seem to be older people that had something else going on or maybe someone had some kind of a idiosyncratic allergic reaction something like that but the venom itself is pretty unlikely to cause any kind of any death in humans although it can cause a lot of pain the other thing to keep in mind is that the fangs of a black widow are very very small and they can only penetrate very thin skin um, you know like skin on your forearm for example is thin but like skin on the palm of your hand or your thumb or the sole of your feet is much thicker and the fangs cannot penetrate that thicker skin so i saw a story where a guy actually uses his thumb to just smush the black widows because he knows he's not going to get uh, bitten and you know he uses this as a trick to kind of impress his friends but anyway you're pretty unlikely to get bitten by a black widow um so that's my take on bugs in your snake room, 
the ones I would be the most concerned about, of course, are mites. And check out my other videos on how to get rid of mites and more about mites. Um, but I'd love to hear your experiences. What other types of bugs have you seen in your snake room? Please write it in the comments below so we can all benefit from your experience. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.